around like 2010, 2011, 2012, there's all this different stuff that's happening. You're back in WWE, but then it's like, are you going to keep wrestling? Are you going to become a producer? Dusty all of a sudden becomes the head of the performance center and runs promo class. Was that time period difficult for you, kind of wondering what you were going to do next? It was, because at that point, I was working a lot with the ECW stuff, and uh, me and Ted DiBiase Jr. were having some great matches, and I felt like I was on my on the rise again, really tearing it up, and I injured my shoulder, and I had to have uh, some serious surgery. So during after that surgery, they brought me in and let me be a producer for about a year. That's the toughest job I've ever done in my life and it is so so much different than being an actual performer and just a, a quick day of what what goes on is is that we we sit in the production meeting room and we are given the script for today's for tonight's raw and we read it over and we read it over again and then we go through each individual segment and talk about them and it takes forever that's not me I got to be moving and doing stuff you know but I'm doing it and they stuck me with the ladies. They always st stuck the um, the greenest guy in the room, you know, the greenest producer with the girls. And this is when they were still the divas, when they were called the divas. And man, I just had a, a hard time with him. I knew exactly what I wanted them to do, but they just weren't pulling it, pulling it out for me. And Vince wasn't liking any of it, you know? He was Hunter started seeing some some improvements from me you know which made me feel good and but one night man i told the girls i forget who it was to go out and just do this you have five minutes and it might even have been less i just do this and i promise you it will work well i'm sitting there on the headset okay i can hear vince talking over there i can hear kevin dunn in the truck i can hear Billy Kidman giving me times and things like that that I have to give these girls the cues and I'm trying to do all this but the girls are not doing anything that I said it's just like when when they would just do what the opposite everything that I said but if they would have just listened to me they would have gotten somewhere good and they come back and they're all like Vince was it okay because they always looked for approval with Vince and he would give them the thumbs up I knew it was the drizzling was terrible. It was f***ing awful because they didn't listen. And as soon as they would walk out of eyes distance there and walk through the curtain, he'd click on and say, Dustin, come see me. So I'm like, okay, I know what's coming. And, and I walk around there and he throws his headset down. He's like, why the f*** are you trying to set my business back 60 years or whatever the f*** he said to me? And I'm just like, Vince, I'm sorry, man. I don't want to hear your goddamn sorry, but they didn't. It's not their f***ing fault it's your fault this is your match but it's i know i'm in charge of this match but i can't go out there and make them do it so this is what i mean by it was not for me and i could not wait to f get fired from that job <laughs> and get back to what i'm best at which is wrestling and so that finally happened and i got fired and i came back and started wrestling again and my dad is down with the pc center now he is being hired on there. And dad is not a pol um, politically correct person. <laughs> in, in a politically correct world of WWE, you know, with so many eyes on you and all that <laughs> Dad was dad. He was the, the Texan that wore his cowboy boots and his boots tucked in his jeans and his cowboy hats. He did not give a <laughs> what somebody told him he needed to wear. Very rarely did you ever see a suit on him. And he's in charge of the talent down there and getting them to learn how to cut promos. And I was down there one day uh, just visiting his promo class because they brought me in. He wanted me to come in and say a few words to the kids. And those were his kids. They loved him. They loved Dad. So it really, really hit home to the whole, all of NXT and all of the wrestling community when he passed away. And I remember sitting there next to him and he gets up and he starts talking to the class and this is when charlotte was there and sasha and all the girls that you see now in raw they were still there at nxt and they're in their promo class and this is the like the i think the middle class there's a beginner middles and a, an ending class finishing class 
And he sits back down and somebody comes up. I don't remember who it was, but they cut this promo. And as soon as it's done, you know, the kids are clapping. And dad said, what did you guys think? And they're going, oh, man. You know, a couple of them said, oh, I thought it was really good. They did this and this and whatever else. And dad said, well, it was a drizzle. It was terrible. So it sunk their battleship really fast, you know. And it's just like, and I, I'm just kind of laughing to myself because he's done that to me many, many times. <laughs> and, but dad loved that. He loved to be around the kids and teaching them how to talk. And they got better and better and better because you had a master that was teaching them. And now they have a couple people that are doing the promo classes that just quite, just can't quite fit the bill. You know, it, it's so hard to go out there and talk learn how to cut a promo and they're just stuck in the rut down there right now and at one point they were supposed to hire me for it but that never came to pass i don't know why maybe they just don't like me at wwe i don't know